This morning we're going to talk about how to out to automate a two column pivot table. If you look in the description it shows a previous video we discussed how to dynamically produce a pivot table and what we did is if there were two columns. Now when I say two columns let's first of all go over what that means. Um, I'm specifically talking about if we're trying to automate a we're going to automate basically a pivot table that's based on two columns. You'll notice we have a request column and then the count. This is what we're going to apply a function to and this is what we want to become our columns. That's what I mean by a, we're automating a two column pivot table. If you have another column and another column and you want to build a pivot table off that, we're not discussing that. What we're going to do is we're going to completely automate uh, this process. So what I've done in a uh, really quick note, if you want to see all of the code uh, listed. Um, it's on GitHub. You'll see SQL Server. I have on my GitHub account uh, admin tools. It's called Output Column SQL. So in fact, I will just go over it with uh, GitHub and then we'll test it in the Management Studio. So I have this procedure Output Columns and this is useful. You'll notice too with the previous video it looks very similar except what we're doing is we're passing in uh, columns and we're passing in a table name. And the columns is using that stuff function that we applied. And so what it does is it outputs a list of columns. Um, it outputs a list of columns separated by a bracket and a comma. So within, I should say, the columns are in a bracket and they're separated by a column. Okay. Then we have this procedure, and this is the two-column pivot. It's accepting the pivot column, which in the case will be this column right here. Then it's accepting the calculation column. That would be this column, request count in this example. Then it's requesting the source table and it's requesting the function. So the table is just what table we're doing the pivot on and then what function are we applying. So let's look at that. So we're going to be using this store procedure above, the output column, so we're passing in the pivot column in the source table. Then we're going to save that string in the variable C and you'll notice what we're doing in this strand of dynamic SQL is we're going to select, we're, we're doing the same pivot function except now we're passing in the columns we're selecting the pivot column, we're selecting the calculation column from the source table. Scroll over here and we're labeling that as T. Then we're doing the pivot and notice here we're passing in the function, then the calculation column because that's what we want is to calculate on that column for the pivot column in and then we're using our C string. So what does this do? So let's go ahead and we'll execute it. So we have the request and we have request count, correct? And what we're going to do is we're going to look for a request, that's our pivot column, request count, that's our calculation column. We're looking for the request table and we're going to apply the function sum. So let's look at it. And you'll notice that this right here, by the way, is uh, I have it selecting, oh I haven't altered the procedure yet. Hold on one second it's selecting the result of this output so you get to see what the output looks like that's useful but let's alter it where it doesn't have produce that output anymore okay and so now let's call this and you'll see it automatically did that now all I had to do is pass in the pivot column I had to pass in the calculation column the table and uh, the function and just to, to show let's suppose we want to change our function right we're going to change it to max Okay, it gets the max. What if we want to get the minimum value? It produces the minimum value. What if we want to see the count of the records? It produces the count. Cool. So, and let's just test it out. Okay, so over in this window, I'm going to build a new table. I'm going to build a table with sales number, called sales number, I mean, and it's going to have uh, column salesperson. That's going to be our pivot column, and it's going to have the value closed sales and that's going to be our calculation column. So let's build a table. Let's insert these values. Okay. So, and I have to remember the names. Okay, so it's going to be sales number is the table name. So the table name goes here, sales number. The pivot column is sales person, I believe. Yes, and then closed sales is our calculation column, closed sales. So let's go ahead and execute the stored procedure. And there we go. We have Bob, David, Joe, John, and the total number of their sales. And again, we can apply the same function. What's the max number of sales uh, that each of them have had? 
Bob, David, Joe, John. So if you're doing a pivot table with two columns, you're pivoting with just two columns. Again, the output's going to be any number of columns. But if you're working with two columns, this completely automates that to where you don't have to do any of the work. All you have to notate down is what column you want it pivoted on, uh, what column you want calculated, the name of the table, and then whatever function you want to use, and this automatically does it for you.